What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Bible Cast. So, when was the last time you prayed to God for something and expected fireworks and the earth to rattle, but all you heard was this? What are you trying to say, God? Why didn't you get them for me? Why didn't I get my blessing? I'll tell you why. Because you didn't listen. You were too busy broadcasting when you should have been tuning in. That isn't always the case, but sometimes that's exactly what's going on. Look here. Luke chapter 10, Jesus sent out 70 followers to go out before him to spread the word of his arrival to the cities he was headed to. They came back and were pretty amazed at the power they had to cast out demons in his name. After Jesus told them exactly how lucky they were to see what they were seeing and to hear the things that they were hearing, there was a certain lawyer guy there who stood up. So quick, what's a lawyer? A lawyer is a person who studies law, right? Well, back then, lawyers studied God's law, which was delivered through the prophets and preached in the synagogues where people heard it and lived by it, just like we live by our civil laws today. The lawyer that I'm referencing shows up in Luke 10, 25, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? If you notice right here, Jesus didn't just give the guy the answer he was looking for. He made him think about what he already knew. You see, Jesus knew that the lawyer had the answer already written on his heart. He didn't have to tell him. The lawyer responded in verse 27, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. So what's the takeaway from this lawyer's interaction with Jesus that we can learn from him? Well, if you are a student of God's Word, the truth, it'll be written on your heart, right? And the answer to life's most difficult questions will already be known before you approach God in prayer. That way you won't be getting crickets for answers. Instead of always asking God why things happen, we're always thanking Him for how He got us through. Once we understand why things happen the way they do, we can start understanding how to overcome anything that stands up against us. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So Timothy says that Scripture is profitable for four things. Number one, it's profitable for doctrine. Didascalia in New Testament Greek, doctrine means instruction, words to live by, God's words to live by. Number two, Scripture is profitable for reproof. Reproof means to rebuke or to admonish, to give harsh counsel to for instruction. Number three, Scripture is used for correction. When we need guidance, Scripture always has the answers. Number four, Scripture is good for instruction in righteousness. Righteousness begins with the Word of God. Studying that Word equips us for every good work. Amen? I'm blessed to be in the company of some very educated Bible scholars in my Sunday morning Bible study group. I mean, these guys can rattle off Scripture they have memorized on almost any topic. It's quite impressive. Me? I don't have that gift. I'm just telling you now. <laughs> Sometimes I have to read the same verse just to, the, the, I have to memorize it 10 times over just to remember it for half the day. But that's okay. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. You see, the Holy Spirit will bring to memory the things you've learned at the time you need it to teach you what you need to know at that moment. In John 14, 26, Jesus says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. When we're reaching out to God for an immediate blessing, sometimes we need to just listen to his Holy Spirit and remember his word to discern our own actions, what he wants that, you know, God wants us to take. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Once we carry that truth in our hearts, we can tear down 
any strongholds the enemy has built up against us and any lies that the devil lays in front of us. A stronghold is nothing more than a prison which keeps you bound by nothing but lies. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10.4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Talking about pulling down strongholds, Jesus was tempted three times in the wilderness by Satan. He was tempted by pleasure, possession, and pride. Each time, Jesus rebuked Satan with what? Scripture. These are the most common areas of weakness for us as humans. If we don't have Scripture to fight with, we're defenseless. Your flesh wasn't designed to fight the battle alone. Jesus was teaching us what we need to do to prepare against temptation. The Word of God is a thriving source of life to those of us who are weakened by life's everyday lies and temptation. We have to make time to spend in prayer and reading scripture no matter what the cost, everybody. We are Christians and it is our strength. I caught this part of the Ellen DeGeneres show, which is super funny, where she had a guy called Average Andy go on this fitness challenge. It was a program with uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson to face Mount Olympus, which has all these kind of fitness obstacles. He couldn't hardly do any of them, which was pretty funny to watch. But the thing is, he wasn't trained to meet any of the challenges, and he failed miserably. We are no better at pulling down strongholds in our life than average Andy if we don't prepare. If the influence of this life has bogged you down and is stealing your time away from God's Word, just remember this. Everything here... It's fleeting, everything. Your inheritance is in the kingdom of God. Nothing here on earth even matters beyond that. It's all going to rot in time. This is a proving ground for God's righteous saints, and that is you. In the spirit of encouragement, put down your phone and pick up the Bible this week. Start a small 10-minute devotion to His Word. Let the Holy Spirit lead you as you grow in verse and righteousness, and may your heart be saturated with truth. May God be with you so you can tear down whatever strongholds are in your life and not be an average Andy. Take care, everybody. God bless us all, and have a wonderful rest of the week.